Welcome to the channel guys, I'm Richard Holdner. Here's the question for today. How does the very famous Sloppy Stage 2 cam compare to the new Brian Tooley Racing Truck Norris cam? Both naturally aspirated and, you guessed it, under boost. In this video we're going to find the answers to the following questions. Being a truck cam, is the Truck Norris cam from Brian Tooley Racing also a turbo cam? And more importantly, do mild cams like the Truck Norris cam actually make better turbo cams? To find out the answers to our questions, whether or not the Truck Norris cam, a truck cam, is also a turbo cam, and more importantly, to find out whether or not cams that enhance low speed power like the Truck Norris cam might actually make better turbo cams because of improved turbo response, we're going to compare the Truck Norris cam to the stock cam to see how much more power we get, and then also compare it to one of the industry, industry standards, which is the Sloppy Stage 2 cam, which as we know is a very popular cam and has been used used with turbo applications an awful lot. So let's take a look. We ran our L33, which is an aluminum 5.3 liter. It came equipped with factory 799 heads. This motor just came from the wrecking yard. I didn't even open it up. I didn't put ring gap in it. All I did was run it the way that we got it. We were running fairly low boost on this competition, so I wasn't really concerned with ring gap too much. We were also running it with E85. I was also running with an air to water intercooler. We had cold air, we had cold water. So I wasn't really too concerned with it. So we ran this thing basically in stock trim. Now this motor came with an early truck manifold. We ran a manual throttle body on it. It had 799 heads. We ran it with the factory rockers, the factory camshaft that came in the motor. And basically it was all stock. All we did was put long tube headers on it tune it with a Holly HP management system. I also changed the changed out the factory injectors because we needed more injector flow for our turbo application. We put a set of Excel 80 pound injectors in it and then tuned it with the Holly HP management system. We also ran a Mazir electric water pump the way that we normally do on the engine dyno. So that's why this thing makes more power than it's obviously rated at. But run in stock trim with long tube headers. These were inch and seven eighths with collector extensions on them. Our 5.3 liter produced 365 horsepower with the stock camshaft and peak torque checked in at 389 foot-pounds of torque. You see it's pretty kind of flat. It even has um, two kind of torque peaks, a, 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 as you will, on these LS applications. But let's find out first what happened when we installed our Truck Norris cam. And remember, um, we're going to take a look at the power curves here on our NA deal. We'll take a look at the Truck Norris cam. And the Truck Norris cam offered quite a bit of power. It increased the peak power up to 424 horsepower. Peak torque was also up um, pretty substantially to 415 foot-pounds of torque. And the Truck Norris cam added power basically everywhere except at the very bottom. And as we've talked about on other videos, the choice of inch and seven-eighths headers and collector extensions um, doesn't do that bottom part of the curve really justice on the NA application. If we were to run an inch and three-quarter header with, with full-length um, exhaust and stuff, you'd see, and this according to Brian Tooley and his testing, where they've run it on their dyno, the truck Norse cam actually matches the stock cam down low, which it wouldn't surprise me um, given the fact that we've run those tests before. So, But we wanted to compare this, first of all, uh, to the stock cam, but then to the sloppy stage two cam to find out the difference between the low speed power between the truck Norris cam and the sloppy stage two cam. Honestly, I'm expecting the, the sloppy stage two cam to make more peak power, which it did. It's a bigger camshaft. The truck Norris cam is a 212. The sloppy stage two is a 228. Were we to run any two camshafts where one of them has a 212 intake duration and the other has a 228 intake duration, 
what's going to happen is the bigger cam is going to make more peak power. And that's exactly what happened. When we ran the sloppy stage two cam, it made more power. It made 441 horsepower. Peak torque checked in right almost the same as the sloppy stage two, 416 foot pounds. But what I want you to look at, and I'm, I'm actually going to get rid of the stock cam here. So it's easier to see. Now we can see the sloppy stage two is in blue. The truck Norris is in red and above 40, eight or 4,900 RPM, the sloppy stage two makes more power on the big end. As I said, not surprising given that it's a bigger cam with 228 degrees of intake duration, but down low, below 4,500 RPM, the truck Norris cam makes more torque. In fact, down at 2,900 RPM, we have 321 foot-pounds for the sloppy stage two and 347. So we're talking about a change of 26 foot-pounds of torque down low in favor of the smaller camshaft. And out at the top, out at let's say 6,500 RPM, we have 424 versus 441. So we have uh, a gain of 17 horsepower out there and a loss, as, they, as, we, as we said, big torque losses down low. So it depends on where you want your power production. But now let's take a look at what happened when we ran these same two cams under boost to find out if this low speed power offered by the truck Norris cam actually improves turbo response and then also to find out if the added power offered by the sloppy stage 2 cam run at the same boost level equates to more power. Now that we've taken a look at the comparison between the Truck Norris cam and the Sloppy Stage 2 and naturally aspirated trim, let's take a look and see what happened once we added boost. This is our Truck Norris cam combination. This is our L33 stock 799 heads, basically just a cammed L33. Has the Truck Norris cam in it. It made 424 horsepower. Here's what happened when we added 7 pounds of boost from a single S475 T6 Summit Racing Turbo. We also had the Pro Charger air to water air cooler and it was run on E85 and again run with the Holly HP management system, those Excel 80 pound injectors. Um, the S475 had no trouble obviously supporting this power. In fact, it's, it's about a thousand horsepower turbo on that T6 version, especially on this combination and run at seven pounds. Our truck Norris cammed version produced 633 horsepower and 625 foot pounds of torque. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the, the naturally aspirated deals, get that out of the way. And then we'll compare this to what happened when we ran the exact same boost. And I'm going to show you the different boost curves because we're going to talk about that. Show you the boost curves run on the sloppy stage two cam. And again, the sloppy stage two cam made more power at the same boost level. It, it produced 659 horsepower. Peak torque was actually down a little bit compared to the um, truck Norris cam with a peak of 616 foot pounds. A 617.6, yeah, um, compared to 625. But what I want you to take a look at is we're seeing a very similar thing. The same thing that we saw in the naturally aspirated combination. This is why I always tell you, first of all, that every cam is a turbo cam because very obvious from this, the truck Norris cam is a turbo cam. The sloppy stage two is a turbo cam. All we've done is added boost to whatever power curve was there. And we're seeing exactly that here. What we're seeing is that in naturally aspirated trim, the bigger cam, the bigger sloppy stage two made more power, made less torque down low. And we're seeing the exact same thing under boost. The truck Norris cam made more power down low, just like it did NA and less power up top because it's a, it's a smaller cam and a fairly effective one at producing low speed torque. What I want to show you is and, if, and if that's what you're doing if you want to make lots of power at the lower boost level and then the bigger cam is obviously the way to go. But we're going to talk a little bit about this when we talk about the boost curves and what you would really want to do with this combination. But what I want you to do is take a look down here below 3000 RPM and take a look at the sizable change in torque 
down low with the turbo. And we're going to talk about why this is happening. We're talking about 468 foot-pounds versus 515 foot-pounds. And we're going to talk about that, and we'll be able to see that in the boost response. And this is something that I think would be even more prevalent out on the street or out at the track uh, because we have kind of an artificial load imposed by the dyno, and I had to be very specific about the way that I loaded these things to get them to be repeatable time after time after time once they were under boost. But it's obvious that the smaller cam makes more low speed power, the bigger cam makes more top end power. That's assuming that we run them at exactly the same boost level. Now let's take a look at the boost curves and we talk a little bit more about this response rate. Okay guys, here's where we really start to understand what's going on and the big difference between having a milder cam like the Truck Norris cam that, that offers more low speed power and its importance for turbo applications. Let's take a look at the boost curves offered by both of these. This is the boost curve offered on our T6 S475. And this response rate, um, you can see, uh, we, we came right up to about seven and a half pounds or so. And as you'll see with the boost curve created by the Sloppy Stage 2, it's identical at the top. And what we need to focus on is what's going on down low. So this is the boost curve offered by our S475. And here is the boost curve offered by the Sloppy Stage 2. You can see identical from 3100 basically all the way out past uh, 6500 RPM. But pay attention closely to what's happening before 3000 RPM. You can see there's a dramatic change in the boost. And when I say dramatic, it's about a pound and a half or so. So we've got um, 5.3 versus 6.1, so actually even a little bit less than a pound. But what we saw from that, and we would see that even, it would be even more telling if we ran it lower than that, is we saw a big change in power from the combinations. So, and it took a lot of effort to make sure that these boost curves were exactly repeatable. The top part of the curve was repeatable every time. The bottom part of the curve, it's very important on turbo applications when you're running them on the dyno, that you put plenty of heat in them so that the response rate duplicates every time. So it took three or four pulls to make sure that, yes, this was going to be the curve for this combination every time, and it did that very well. And so I had to do that and duplicate that with both camshafts. And as we see, the bigger sloppy stage two cam is much less responsive than the smaller Truck Norris cam. Now here's the important point. The Sloppy Stage 2 made more power NA, it made more power at the same boost level, but here's the thing. If you have a thousand horsepower turbo, which one of these cams would make a thousand horsepower? You guys can go ahead and make a comment and let me know, let me know what you think, but the answer is obvious. They both will. <laughs> and that's the thing, that's the important thing, is if we have a thousand horsepower turbo, both of these cams would be able to make a thousand horsepower turbo, a thousand horsepower. Both of these cams would easily be able to top out what that turbo has available in terms of flow and power potential. So you can make the same power with both of them. It's just going to take less boost with the Sloppy Stage 2 because it's a bigger cam than the Truck Norris cam. Since they'll both make about a thousand horsepower, and this, this goes with lots of different camshafts, not just these two. But if you look at the bottom part of the curve, the smaller cam offers much better boost response. And as I said, this would be even more telling out on the street and at the track. It offers more boost response. So a smaller camshaft on a turbo application is probably a better choice. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what's the takeaway in this comparison between the Brian Tooley Racing Truck Norris cam and the Sloppy Stage 2 cam? Well, not surprisingly, the bigger Sloppy Stage 2 cam makes more power than the smaller Truck Norris cam. The smaller Truck Norris cam makes more power down low than the bigger Sloppy Stage 2 cam. That's going to happen with almost any cam comparison where we have one bigger cam and one smaller cam. But here's the thing. Once we ran boost, we saw a very similar thing. Run at the same boost level, the cam that made more power up top also makes more power up top under boost and the cam that makes more power down low also made more power down low under boost because the boosted curves mirror the NA curves but that's not the whole story the reason that I did this test is to demonstrate the benefit of having a milder cam on a turbo application because if we extend this out and look beyond the obvious picture if we have our quintessential thousand horsepower turbo or a 700 horsepower turbo or whatever we have if we have our thousand 
1,000 horsepower turbo like the T6 version, the S475 that we ran on this combination, and you're trying to enhance low speed power while still having the potential to make 1,000 horsepower from that turbo, both of these cams will actually do that. One will just do it a lot better down low. The Truck Norris cam will offer better boost response while still maintaining the ability to run a thousand horsepower. Armature holder, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.